So section one introduced us to recursion, and now we're gonna start applying recursion to some real life situations. So for this section, we're specifically looking on modeling growth and decay. So the first example we're gonna look at models growth. So a small company with 12 employees is growing at a rate of 20% per year. It will need to hire more employees to keep up with the growth, assuming its business keeps growing at the same rate. Okay, so we're going to write our um, recursion formula for this. So first things first, we always start with the initial term. Well, in this case, when I write u sub 1 or u sub 0, do I want to start with u sub 1 or u sub 0? Let's think about that. So my first term is 12. Okay, and when I use n for the term number, what is that really representing? What is this n representing? The number of years. Okay, so when they have 12 employees, have any years gone by? No, it's like the very like first year, no years have gone by. So we want to say u sub 0, so that 0 represents 0 years, right? So at the 0 years have gone by, right? That's like the initial year. That's why I want to say u sub 0 here. This is where it's going to get a little different. And then I should say u sub n equals Okay, now that here's a little bit different. What we're going to do anytime we work with growth and decay, before we write our u sub n minus 1, we're going to take 1 and then plus or minus the rate. We're going to have our rate in here. And then we'll take that times our u sub n minus 1, our previous term. Okay, and that'll make sense as we go through this. So if I look at 20%, I would want to write that as a decimal. So 0.2, right? Move it 2 to the left to make it a decimal. And since it's growth, I'm going to use addition. So I should say 1 plus 0.2. Okay, because that will give, when I plug this in, let's just look at this for example, let's simplify this. So I have u sub n equals now 1.2 times u sub n minus 1. And then I should also say, when n is greater than or equal to, well, we started with zero, right? So now I gotta say one there instead of what we did the other day. Okay, so basically what happens is after I look at the, the next year, right? I'd be plugging in 12 for my previous term, and then I take it times, so 12 is really replacing in there, taking it times 1.2. And if you did that, that would give you your new amount of employees, correct? Okay, so that's why, that's where this 1 plus 0.2 comes from. So now we know our recursion formula, let's use this to help us find some things out. So I have my recursion formula up top there still. And it says, how many people should the company plan to hire in each of the next five years? Well, we just want to apply our recursion formula. And there's two ways to do this. I could basically take my calculator and start with 12 and take it times 1.2. And that should tell me how many of my new employees are. And then I can take that next number times 1.2 and so on and so forth. Okay, and then I can just write them all out. So if I did that, I would pop up my calculator. And I would start with 12 employees times 1.2. And I might just jot these down. So I went from 12 to 14.4. And remember, if I want to keep having it recur, I just hit times 1.2. So it takes my last answer times 1.2, and I just keep hitting it. And I could just keep writing these down. 17.28, and that next one was 20.7, and so I have the next three years. I do it two more times. And we got 24.8 and 29.8. So we got 24.9 and 29.9. There we go. So then I can take a look. Well, the first time I wanted two new employees, and then I wanted about three new employees the second year. And then the third year I wanted, you know, about three and a half. I'm gonna just go three again. And then the next year about four employees, and the last year about five. This one I could have put four as well, it doesn't matter. So that's one way to do it. I could have just simply done it. Or, remember we could have used our sequential mode, like we talked about. Remember, go into mode, 
change it to SEQ to get in sequential mode. And then we want to get our equation editor. I already have mine typed in. So remember, this is important up top. We're starting at the zeroth term, right? Because no years have gone by. And your initial amount is 12 employees. And then 1.2 times U sub N minus 1. And I'm going to go to my table. And there we go. When one year went by, 14.4, and I can just count, so on and so forth. And then in the second question, it asks, how many employees will I have in five years? We'll have in the table, it's nice and easy to see. Fifth year, 29.86. So we have about 29.86. We should probably round up to about 30 employees. 30 employees. And remember quickly, if I wanted to do it on my home screen, remember I can always call upon my sequence by finding that U by hitting second seven and calling upon the fifth year. 29.85, so there we go. So, so remember you can do it on your home screen, you can do it in the table, all kinds of ways to do this now. This one says identify the sequence and exercise one is growth of decay. Well, I just grabbed one A. Okay, from the assignment, and then give the percent of change for each. Well, growth or decay is easy. It's increasing, so it's growth. That part's pretty straightforward. To find the percent of change or the percent change, remember all you're going to do is take the change and put it over the original amount. So I can just grab any two terms next to each other. So I'm going to do the 100 and the 150. So how much does it go up in there? The change is 50. And the original amount was 100. So 50 over 100, and I get 0.5, and I can change that to a percent, so 50%, and a 50% change. And I can grab any two numbers, and that would work, as long as they're right next to each other. It'll also ask you to factor some unique situations. So looking at this, and this will become useful with what we're doing. It says factor the expression so that the variable only appears once. Well, if I look at these, Two terms, I got u sub n minus 1 plus 0 0.07 times u sub n minus 1. They each have a u sub n minus 1. So I could factor that out. Remember, we can, what our factor means almost like undistributing. So I'm going to pull that u sub n minus 1 out, and then what's left inside of parentheses? Well, if I pull this first one out, it's, you're really dividing. So if I divide by itself, I'm left with 1. And if I divide this out or pull it out, I'm left with my 0 0.07. And then I could simplify this even further and combine these two to get 1.07. And usually we like to write the u sub n minus 1 after. Okay, so I could simplify that. And now let's look at a problem with some decay. I'm just going to help you get this set up. You're going to actually have to answer these questions on the, on the assignment. So I'll just help you get the, the recursion set up. So it says, suppose the initial height from which a rubber ball drops is 100 inches. So let's draw that in just about. The ball is up 100 inches. And then the rebound heights to the nearest inch are 80, 64, 51. So that means it's dropping and when it bounces it's going to bounce up to 80 inches and then it's going to bounce up to 64 inches and then it's going to bounce up to 51 and it's going to keep going like that. So that was 64, this, or that was 80, sorry. 64, 51 and so on and so forth. So it, it has a constant ratio of what it's decreasing by. How could I find that? How would I be able to find, so when I set up my recursion for this, I, I know the initial. So u sub zero, right, when no drops have gone. u sub zero, no bounces have happened, was 100. But what happens when I try to write this? Let's think about this. It went from 100 to 80. Is this a, arithmetic sequence or geometric just by looking at it? It looks like it should be geometric, right? Because it went down 20 and then it went down 16 and then 4, 13. Those are inconsistent. So this is geometric. So to find the common ratio of a geometric, we need to take 80 and divide it by 100, the previous term. So we get 0.8 for our common ratio. So now let's think about this. When I write my recursion here, by something times u sub n minus 1. What's going to go in there? Is it like 1 plus or minus something? 
Or is it, do I just put point 0.8 in here? Well, let's kind of think about what's happening. If I plugged in 100 for my previous term and want to get 80 as an output, what would I multiply by? Yeah, I'd multiply by 0.8. And let's see, let's think about why that is. If I wanted to use the 1 plus or minus something, I would have to think about what's the percent drop here? What would be the percent drop? Well, if it's got a 0.8 common ratio, that means it dropped what? 20%. Because 0.2 is left over, that's 20%. So then if I wanted to write this, that'd be minus 0.2, because it's a drop, it's a decay, and 20% as a decimal is 0.2, and that's where that 0.8 comes from. Okay, so if it's a 20% drop, then I can tell that it would be 0.8 in front of that. So now knowing that, I could also state lastly is that when n is greater than or equal to 1. So use this to help you solve for a and b for 6. If you had some confusion on where we came up with these things, please ask me in class and I will go through that.